Engaging citizens, a game changer for development, Why People Participate, with Tiago Peixoto, Governance Specialist, Governance Global Practice, World Bank Group. Hi, and welcome to the closing lecture of this module. In the previous lectures, you heard about the importance of citizen participation. But if achieving citizen participation is so important, we need to understand what drives people to participate in the first place. Such an understanding will allow us to develop more effective strategies of citizen engagement. In this lecture, then, I will first look at why people participate. I will start by looking at rational choice theory and explore two concrete examples of citizen participation in terms of benefits and costs of participation. I will then go beyond that and assess other factors impacting participation. And if you bear with me until the end, I will provide tactical tips for increasing citizen participation. So why do people participate? Most of the understanding of participation follows what academics call a rational choice approach, which can be simplified in the following manner. Citizens will participate only when the benefits of participating are greater than the costs of doing so. The costs of participation can be defined as both material, such as the cost of taking transportation to a community meeting, and as immaterial, such as the time spent on participating. The benefits of participation can be defined very broadly, including, for instance, getting a pothole fixed in front of your house or helping to elect a politician who supports a cause that is important to you. So, very simplistically, according to the rational choice theory, we can expect individuals to participate when the benefits of participating are greater than the costs incurred by participating. In fact, many of the things that you hear about citizen engagement are based directly on this type of rational approach reasoning. For instance, one of the mantras for those working with citizen engagement is to say that people will only participate when they know that their participation will make a difference. That is, when they observe a clear benefit of their participation. How true is that? Let's, uh, let's assess how important this factor of making a difference is by exploring a concrete example of a citizen engagement platform. Fix My Street is a UK-based online platform that allows citizens to participate by reporting problems with local infrastructure to the authorities. This includes potholes, graffiti, or broken street lights, for instance. Fix My Street automatically forwards the report to the relevant local authority, and the citizen is later notified if and when the problem is fixed by that authority. We can assume that if the problem is fixed, the citizen perceives that their participation made the difference and they benefited from their own participation. Together with my colleagues Frederick Schroberg and Jonathan Mellon, I conducted some research into the level of citizen participation achieved by the platform. By analyzing the cases of nearly 400,000 problem reports submitted to Fix My Street, we looked at the extent to which having a problem fixed, that is, seeing that their participation makes a difference, increases the likelihood of citizens submitting another report, that is, participating a second time. Here's what we found. If an individual's first report problem is fixed, they are 54% more likely to report a second problem. However, we also found that a substantial number of individuals continue to report problems even though none of their previously reported problems have been fixed. These findings tell us two things about the perceived benefits of participation. On the one hand, people are more likely to participate if they see that their participation makes a difference. On the other hand, our results show that knowing their participation makes a difference is not the only factor determining whether people participate or not. I will get back to this later. Now, let's take a look at the effect of participation costs on participation levels. Following the rational choice theory, the use of technology represents an opportunity to reduce participation costs. For instance, by making it more convenient to participate through the use of mobile phones and the internet, we can reduce both the material and immaterial costs of participation. And the lower the cost of participation, the more likely citizens should be to participate. But how true is this statement? As a practical example, let's look at the participatory budgeting in the state of Rio Grande do Sul in Brazil. 
Every year in Rio Grande do Sul, over 1 million citizens vote on budget priorities in the state, deciding where a portion of the public investment should be spent, for instance, on school equipment or health infrastructure. Citizens can vote in two ways. They can physically go to a polling station and cast their vote. Alternatively, they can conveniently cast their votes through the internet with their computers or mobile phones, implying lower participation costs. But what are the effects of lowering the cost of participation through internet voting? We did some research in Rio Grande do Sul, and here's what we found. First, the introduction of online voting led to an 8.2% increase in participation. Second, online voting promoted, particip promoted the participation of citizens who were previously unengaged with public issues. Online voters were more likely to be younger, wealthier, and more educated. Yet, a significant number of online voters stated that they would have voted even if they had to walk to a polling station. Looking at the cases of Fix My Street and the Rio Grande do Sul budget vote together, we can draw two broad and slightly contradictory conclusions. On the one hand, all other things equal, citizens are more likely to participate when the benefits are higher and the costs are lower. On the other hand, we see that citizens also participate even when the benefits are lower and the costs are higher. Here's a simple example to help us understand this paradox, which calls the rational choice approach into question. Let's think about voting in presidential elections. In most presidential elections, the chance of a person getting hit by a car on the way to the polling station is higher than the chance of them casting a vote that will decide who the next president will be. Now, let's think about it. People sometimes have to walk long distances, sometimes in horrible weather, to cast a vote that has an incredibly small chance of making a difference. And on top of that, they face a higher risk of getting hit by a car on their way than of actually making a difference. Yet, they still vote. Why is this so? To understand such behavior, we have to move beyond the mere calculation of costs and benefits and identify which other factors lead people to participate. For instance, first, some people view participation as a civic duty, and they are therefore willing to participate despite the high costs and low benefits their participation entails. In other words, citizens can derive value by performing a behavior that they believe to be desirable, and participating is a psychologically rewarding exercise. Second, we should understand the reasons behind participation in a broader context of interaction between individuals and society. For example, citizens are often willing to go to great lengths to establish a feeling of belonging, whether it be to their community, their city, or their country. As a result of factors such as sense of civic duty and the search for belonging, citizen behaviors can sometimes be precisely the opposite of what the rational choice approach would predict. For instance, according to the rational choice approach, if turnout in an election is expected to be high, citizens will be less likely to vote, since their participation would make less of a difference to the election results. Yet, research shows that individuals are in fact more likely to vote when they're exposed to messages showing electoral turnout is expected to be high. To summarize, in the study of citizen participation, the calculus of costs and benefits, while a valid approach, does not fully explain participation. So based on some of the findings in existing research on citizen engagement in both electoral and non-electoral processes, here are seven leads on how to increase participation, taking into account the rational choice approach as well as broader behavioral drivers of participation. First, Show results and communicate them. Results matter for citizens. As we saw in the case of Fix My Street, the more impact citizens see they have made, the more likely they are to participate. But as well as making participation impactful, it is important to communicate to them the impact that their participation had, which people often forget to do. So if the participation of citizens makes a difference, make sure you let them know about it. Second, design multiple channels of interaction. Lowering participation costs by varying the available channels of interaction may indeed increase participation, as we saw in the case of Rio Grande do Sul. The case of Rio Grande do Sul is also illustrative for another reason. When the cost of participation are lowered through the introduction of technology, we also saw the introduction of a new socioeconomic group into a participatory process. 
Therefore, we should design citizen engagement processes that create not only a single channel, but multiple channels to participate, where technological solutions are a supplementary means to participate and not the only one. Third, provide multi-tiered levels of engagement. Each citizen is willing to bear different costs of participation, ranging from a simple click online all the way to personally organizing a face-to-face -face meeting. Explore all the intermediate levels of engagement between the most and the least costly type of participation. Fourth, get personal. Research shows that the more personal a mode of mobilization is, the more likely citizens are to participate. Personalize your mobilization strategy to the individuals you're looking to engage and leverage the potential of technologies to better target your audiences. Fifth, reinforce the sense of civic duty and collectiveness. Individuals are more likely to participate when they perceive it as their duty and give salience to collective action and reinforce the sense of belonging by showing that other citizens are also participating. Sixth, get citizens pre-commitment. Research shows that citizens are more likely to participate when they have previously agreed to do so and when they have planned on how they will do it. Whenever possible, start by getting a low-cost commitment from citizens to participate in the future, then ask them to participate later. New technologies and social networks provide growing opportunities for citizens to publicly commit to public action. Take advantage of these opportunities. To conclude, seventh, learn to experiment and experiment to learn. The tactics above should be seen as leads rather than infallible tips. What works and what doesn't work to get citizens to participate is always an empirical question. And only by experimenting with different engagement tactics will you find which one best fits your design and your audiences. Again, the cost of experimentation are particularly driven down when working with technology-mediated citizen participation. Leverage that opportunity, and when you find something valuable, make sure you share your lessons. You have now been exposed to some of the basics on why people participate and how to apply that knowledge. As a next and final step, I encourage you to go further and explore the suggested readings, which will provide you with more details and tools to foster enhanced citizen participation. Thank you.